Welcome to worship with the community of Kilrenny Parish Church. We may not be able to worship in the church building at this time, but we can still come together as a worshipping community to give thanks and praise to God. So let us come and worship God. Lord Jesus, you've called us to be your people in this place. Give us a sense of your power in our lives, your love in our hearts, and your joy in all we do. Join us now as we worship you this day. Amen. So let us begin our worship this morning by singing together that beautiful Wesleyan hymn, Oh for a Thousand Tongues to Sing, our great Redeemer's Praise. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Lord God, high in the heavens, yet kneeling at our feet, let us sing praises loudly. Let us pray quietly. Let us listen attentively. Let us act presently. Let our words praise you. Let our actions praise you. Living, loving, eternal God. As we draw near to you, may we find that you are already on your way to meet us. And more than halfway, bridging sin gulfs, breaking sin walls, your sparkling irresistible love wins through. Let us praise your holy name. Searching God into every dark place, into every hard heart, into every narrow mind, into every shut mouth, into every closed eye. Come with healing, light to open up and reveal to us not only who you are, but what your love might be in us, through us, or even despite us. Forgive us for choosing bleakness instead of blessedness. Into our wintry worlds, let the smell of summer come. Let this be in our lives, God's February. Redolent of new life, new light, new beginning, new hope. May God in infinite mercy shine healing light upon all your living, that the life you live may be a life lived to God's glory each day, each night. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we ask these things. And now we join our voices together in the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our Gospel reading today comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, beginning at verse 29. Jesus and his disciples, including James and John, left the synagogue and went straight to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was sick in bed with a fever. And as soon as Jesus arrived, he was told about her. He went to her, took her by the hand and helped her up. The fever left her and she began to wait on them. After the sun had set and evening had come, people brought to Jesus all the sick and those who had demons. All the people of the town gathered in front of the house. Jesus healed many who were sick with all kinds of disease and drove out many demons. He would not let the demons say anything because they knew who he was. Very early the next morning, long before daylight, Jesus got up and left the house. He went out of town to a lonely place where he prayed. But Simon and his companions went out searching for him. And when they found him, they said, everyone is looking for you. But Jesus answered, we must go on to the other villages around here. I have to preach in them because that's why I came. So he travelled all over Galilee, preaching in the synagogues and driving out demons. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Let us sing again. We cannot measure how you heal. Oh, 
the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, Lord. Amen. Our journey through Mark's Gospel continues today with Jesus healing and teaching all over Galilee. I've spoken of the sense of purpose, energy and action that the writer of Mark gives to his telling of Jesus' ministry. You can hear it in today's reading. It picks up from the healing in the synagogue from last week. We're told Jesus and his disciples, including James and John, left the synagogue and went straight to the home of Simon and Andrew. We don't know if Jesus knew for sure that Simon's mother-in-law was unwell or if she had just taken ill that day, but he doesn't hesitate to go to her and offer her comfort and healing. This healing is done in private, not like the one in the synagogue. There are no great flourishes here, no dramatic acts of power. It's just a simple act of listening, observing, holding a hand, acting quietly. Of course, word had already got round about the events in the synagogue, and it didn't take long for people to come flocking to Simon and Andrew's house seeking healing for themselves and their family members. Being the Sabbath, no one could travel until after sunset and no work could be done until then either. And that's when the Sabbath officially ended. No doubt that meant Jesus was on the go until the early hours of the following morning. Now, anyone who's ever preached in church or spoken in public at any event, will know that afterwards, all you want to do is slump in the chair and enjoy a bit of peace and quiet. Let the adrenaline wash out your body. And you would have thought it'd be quite natural for Jesus to go, I did my work in the synagogue. I've come back, I've even healed somebody here in the house. Now just let me calm down. Let me just bring everything back and centre myself, as it's often said. But instead, Jesus saw this as just the beginning of his day. He taught in the synagogue, healed a man in need there, then healed Simon's mother-in-law. Then within a matter of hours, he was healing anyone who would come to see him. Eventually, all who needed to be seen were done, 
and had gone home. The crowds disappeared and the household would eventually have settled down. So when everyone woke up the next morning and there was no sign of Jesus, you can imagine the panic that gripped them. Where was he? What could have happened? So the disciples started searching the area. When they found Jesus in a lonely place, they didn't really understand his need for solitude. Yesterday had been exciting for them, finding themselves in the centre of the action. And then no sooner had that happened than it looked like their journey, which had just begun, had been snatched away from them and Jesus had gone. So you can understand their anxiety, their frustration. But little could they have realised then the real reason Jesus was able to spend so much energy healing and teaching was that he had been able to re-energise himself through prayer with his Father in heaven. He didn't have to go far away to pray, but he did need somewhere that ensured he wouldn't be disturbed to allow him to rest properly, not sleep, but to re receive confirmation, affirmation, and to be re-energized by his father. So often in life, we set out on a path that promises so much, but we run out of energy too soon. Our plans become unstuck because we didn't spend enough, enough time with God in prayer. We begin with great intentions, but then we get bogged down in the details or we lose sight of the big picture and we forget to return to God seeking his support and his advice. The lesson of today's reading is that life, a life full of action and activity needs to be grounded in prayer and time spent with God. If we don't do that, then we will never succeed, no matter how worthy the cause might be. This lesson is even more important for us as a church, especially at a time when we're experiencing so much change and being struggled to be heard over the clamour of the crowd. So now we need to spend time listening for the voice of God asking him what direction he wants us to take, accepting that there are times we will have to give up something precious to us, traditions, long-held views and attitudes, in order to continue to do his work. Now, I don't know what that would mean for any single one of us, but if we do nothing else during the time we have been restricted in our activities, then time spent with God in prayer will be time well spent. We need to discern his plan for us as individuals, for us as a church. A church here in Kilrenny, the church as part of the new presbytery of Fife, and the church worldwide. None of us knows what the future holds, but if we live with God as a real presence in our lives, then whatever happens next will be part of his great plan. Amen. And may God add his blessing to these words. Let us come together in prayer. Blessed are you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You have made us, and in you we live and move and have our being. In you we rejoice, in you is the fullness of life. We give thanks for the wonders and the beauty of creation. May we delight in your world as you delight in it. May your church show a great love and care for the world, as you love and care for it. We pray for all who do not know of your love or your presence, and we ask that you bless all who preach the word. 
Lord of love. In you we live and move and have our being. We pray for all who teach us, teaching us to respect and love your world. Bless all who work in conservation and in protecting the resources of the earth. Help us to enjoy the world and delight in it with artists and musicians and all craftspeople. Lord of love, in you we live and move and have being. God, we thank you for your presence in our homes and communities, in our schools and in our work. Bless our loved ones and all who have enriched our lives by their goodness. God, we ask your presence to bring comfort and hope to all who are struggling at this time because of the pandemic. We remember those injured in accidents or acts of violence, those who are ill and all who are in hospital. And now in the silence of our hearts, we remember all those we know of in need of your comfort, your care and your compassion. Lord of love, in you we live and move and have our being. You give life and light. In you, life and light are eternal. May all our loved ones departed and all the saints rejoice in the fullness of eternal light and love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour and Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So let us complete our worship today with another hymn, We Have a Gospel to Proclaim. We have
And now go in peace, deep peace of the running wave to you, deep peace of the flowing air to you, deep peace of the quiet earth for you, deep peace of the shining stars to you, deep peace of the infinite peace to you. These things we ask in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>